Hello and welcome to back to another review. <sighs> These reviews are just mad. I've noticed I've been doing more reviews and, and less building than what I normally would do, so there you go. Anyway, Charles gave a bit of a change. We are, as you can tell, been having a look at the ship. So it's a, a Z39 German destroyer um, built in, well, it was commissioned in 1940. But it wasn't built till like 42, 43 time. And it mostly worked in the Baltic fleets and around Denmark and around Northern Europe. So there we have it. So it's a bit of history. Uh, after the war it was uh, in Plymouth for some time before transferred to the US Navy. That was then sold to the French Navy afterwards where it was used for spare parts and sadly just scrapped. So there you go. So Z39 is destroyer. As you can tell, one other characteristic is a dragon kit. This is the first time on my channel we are going to have a dragon kit. It's not the first time I built a dragon kit but it's my second one I've ever built. It looks good. I've heard good things about it. It's no problem. As you can see, it's 135th Oh, sorry, 100, 1 to 350th scale. So, what puzzled me is called a modern sea power series. Hmm, modern sea power. Uh, it's a smart kit, that means it comes with all the photo etch. Um, go have a look through that. Um, go talk about some ups and downs with it, that's no problem. It was originally, I've had a look at it, 2011. By the time of this recording, it's 2017, so it's only six years old. Not even that, probably. So, yeah, it says, um, it says, well, what was that? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you get two marking options one for the German um, Kriegsmarine, or the other for the US Navy. That's it. Uh, yeah, lovely box art. I do not know who it's painted by because I can't see a signature, which is. Oh, there we go. Me and my art skills, David Signature. Uh, Clark, Break, whichever, signed it. I don't know. But anyhow, let's have a look inside. Okay, so it's going to be very, very different today. We're having a different position. Because I'm kind of sick of using the other camera and turning for rounds, basically. You can see what I'm seeing. So as you can see, fairly big box, kind of difficult to get on the screen. Now a couple of things before we get started, uh, just your whereabouts is it? I get prepared for these and don't do it, yes. A ruler, we go use a ruler to measure so you can tell how big the actual kit is. So as you can tell, fairly big, about 50 centimeters or 45 whichever. So you can see, nice box out on the side of the hole, well side of the box side of the hull, depicting all the photo etch parts. Now one thing that really did baffle me was the this part. You even get figures. Hmm, that is a bit uh, overpowerative for that scale. So here we are. This is what you get inside the box. My instructions. Of course all beautiful plastic parts. I'm going to take everything out of the box and I'm going to go through it step by step. I did get this second hand from uh, a model show I recently went to and personally I did a great nice deal with this. This cost me about £20, I, don't, I think that's about, do you how many would that be in US dollars, probably about, about $25 I reckon in for US or, or something like that. Twenty, thirty dollars for it. I don't know, but that's it. So as you can tell, the instructions are printed in black and white. We've got color, well, our part callouts. Uh, so there's a fair amount of parts. We got a photo etch part. We got some metal parts there. Uh, blue parts for ones not in use are just these. So pretty much, you use a load and a load of parts. 
As you see, this is one of the marking schemes. Um, German Z39 destroyer 1945, so there you go. It's at the end of the war before it was um, decommissioned. Uh, got the other one here for the US Navy DD3, oh sorry, DD939 1945. So it wasn't long before it was going to the US Navy. Hmm. That is fairly different actually. H. Now, what puzzled me, which really kind of annoyed me in a way, when I was having a look, uh, the hull colour, the main cam grey camouflage, it says a mixing ratio of 65% white and 35% black. That's grey. <laughs> and of course, there are many shades of grey, but that is, in a way, it's not good enough, guys, just to say, oh, mix this and this to make a grey. No. It's luckily, whilst at the show I did some research and I've picked up some paint. So this is Mr. Hobby Colour. It's H306. Uh, so it's the same colour as you paint for your F15. Or, if you want to do time your paints, it's XF19 or I think it's most probably XF18. I don't have that. So that's the paint. It's got the whole whole red and then we've got a black stripe around the base of the bottom where the um, water line is. is. <sighs> there we go, and of course the figures, doesn't tell you what colours to paint the figures but also what poses they are and also which parts for each area. So there we go. So here we have our um, your colour call outs, do's and don'ts, what to do. So there's a, not a lot of detail going on here in regards to the um, anti-aircraft guns, cannons and even the normal um, AA cannons as well. Just There's AAA cannons as well which is very good, especially here. That's a... is that a flak... a flak 38 or something like that? It's not a pack 40, I think it's a flak 40 or something like that, I don't know. But a lot of history buffs will tell me different, so I'm not I'm not going to complain. I do get things wrong, and there we go. So it is a lot of work going to these turrets, guys. I mean, you've got as I said, you got your AAA, your normal AA cannons, you got your normal batteries on the front here with the cannons, both for the front and oh, sorry, both. One for the forward, two for the back of the cannons there, and even our torpedo tubes have some great um, moulds going in. Then you've got some, uh, not turbines, but like, uh, what, what were they called? Ah, oh, some rope things, whichever. <sighs> I don't know, I really need to do some research. And then we finally do our searchlights on our crow's nest, I think you should call it. Crow's nest, it sounds like a pirate ship. And then we have our masks going in. That goes onto the top, which fits there. And then we move on to our range finders, radio antennas, uh, normal batteries sidewalls, everything going on here. So it's a full detail kit for just a little ship, which is kind of nice. So you, it basically goes into some stages. I think it's three stages. Let me just have a quick check. Yeah, sorry, four stages it goes into. So there. Let's pull this along, sorry. Got our funnel system going in there, or one of them anyway. That's all going to be made up, photo etch going onto there, and even onto the sides here, where some more batteries are on that lot. It's just going to be full and full of parts, guys. I don't know much about ships, but it looks very, very beautiful. And I'm looking forward to building this, guys, because there's so, so much going on here. And then surprisingly then we move on to a hull, which then that's all small parts put into place, 
all our lifeboats, torpedo tubes, other various equipment going on to the deck there. Then, hmm, to our turrets on. Hmm, that's pretty nice. Even the lifeboats are separately moulded. Wow, that's really nice. So, there we go. And then, move on to our screws, flaps. What flaps? I said no flaps there. Um, rudders, sorry. Even our cranes. And then finally, everything going to place with our fine little details. And then this is all projected onto a stand. Even telling us which screws to drill through to allow the ship to be moulded onto place. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the instructions. So there we go. That is all done and dusted. Uh, applying decals. Oh, so I, oh, of course, decals is for the US version, of course, yeah. Uh, Dragon, Austria. Hmm, that's weird. Copyright 2011, there you go. So there we are. So very quick instructions. As you can see now, plastic parts. We have the lower and upper hull, which means you can make this the waterline series if you chose to do so. So using our ruler, that's how long the hull is, about 40, 35, 38 centimetres long. So it's not bad for a destroyer, but it looks absolutely beautiful. So the bags, like so. Um, I don't know whether this is how Dragon bagged them or whether the guy who I bought this off did it like so. I don't know. Hmm. Let's just have a look. Tape everywhere. Um, hmm. Good question. There we go. Let's go off. So, oh, that's nice. So one hull is bagged, whereas the other is separately bagged is pretty nice. So the hull is in one piece with the low hull. It is smooth, it is crisp and it's actually a nice, it's a kind of a plastic that you expect from a proper uh, model company which is basically very nice. It's slightly thicker than the Airfix brand new ones they do but it feels absolutely beautiful. Hmm, very nice. So that's part 10. I don't know what sprue name that is. And of course we have the holes where we drill the whole base through the bottom for the stand to go on, which we will get round to later. So in this other bag, um, hmm, I'm going to fit get the hobby knife out and just slice some of these open I'm afraid. Like so. Tell you what, let's do this end. Is it? That's got tape on the end so no. Oh wait a minute. This is very confusing. So all cellar tapes up, no problem. And even on the end, there is a hard bit of plastic to protect the end. Because that is fairly sharp on the ends there. Fairly sharp, but crisp detail. So there's all the portholes on the side and the front there, starboard and port side. Moulding, same again. Crisp, sharp plastic. To which then this part then fits on like so, making a nice, good, full of hull. Hmm, very beautiful indeed. Wow. So what I'm going to do is going to pop that on the end there. We're going to keep that safe out of the way. So next, what we got next? Tell you what, let's go with the big parts first. So uh, pretty much going to be bigger. So this one was already open. 
well, was already open. So you have the hole, well, top of the hole, deck, decking, whichever you want to call it, there. So as you can tell, once again, nice, beautiful deck mouldings as well. There is no flash, it is all crisp, raised detail. Wow, beautiful. So now we have the propellers or screws, whichever you want to call them, some parts rounds, some areas, or rudders. Don't know what that is for. That's for the bottom of the hull. I have no idea what that's for. But there you go. That is like so. Absolutely beautiful. Nothing on the side. Not at all bad. So then that's that done. The other part that was in the bag has a lot of deck pieces on, just not the camera, sorry. So a fair few pieces. That includes a one-piece funnel, actually two one-piece funnels there. Detail around the outside where some armour plating, plating is. We have some various objects on here, like, oh, I don't know, some doorways. We got some ways here. But the actual ways inside are beautifully, again, outside detail is so amazing. You can even have the doors open or closed if you wish to. And even the life jackets, well, life jackets, life. Um, not a harness, it's uh, dinghy, whatever you want to call it, is displayed on the outside. I don't know much about ships, do I? So there we go, all beautiful detailed, and I don't know where if you can tell on this funnel here, but there you can tell the detail on the funnels and that lot are just so beautiful, even on here, like I said. Just there. The doors can be open or closed. I think it is completely done. And on that side too. Not bad. So moving on, have some other parts. This includes the actual cannons. Just have to take this piece off. So I have three lots of cannons. Our front and our two rear. Once again, so beautiful detail, let's turn the camera back. So beautiful detail on there. There we go. As you can tell, beautiful crisp moulding on there. And what I really do like is even the cannon ends are actually drilled out as well. Which just goes to show that it's absolutely Beautiful again, it's beautiful. There you have it, all nice, done. That's the first funnel. I'm just going to get the other one so you know what the other one's like. This has a lot of raised detail on for the rivets and that lot, as you can tell. Only small, once again, the cannon is actually moulded outwards, don't know where you can see or not, but beautiful, beautiful. Now the other one is here, have our bags, slice these open, oh, look at actually will, I don't think dragon bags actually do want to be cut open. So this one, you have the, your lifeboats on, your life raft, whichever. Again, very nice, just reset the camera. Again, inside the boat deck there, it's all beautiful. Across the top there, you can tell, very beautifully done. And even on the underside here, in the actual life raft, you can actually see all the wooden planks in there, which are individually done. So that would look absolutely beautiful with a wash. Other parts we have here, these are little 
Canon is actually what I call it. I'm just going to refocus you. Just here, as you can see, all beautifully moulded. They're all separate as well, which makes it even better for painting and that lot. There's a load of tiny little pieces on here. So, if you have a good eye, you have no problem at all whatsoever. Just be delicate with these parts and you'll be fine. Our other bag is here. As you can tell, this one has all the torpedoes and that lot in. So that open. Our torpedoes, all the torpedo tube says two of these, so I'm going to show one. As you can see, moulding couldn't ask good. All completely beautiful. You know how Dragon kits are. But again, I'm amazed at even how <sighs> over the moon by this. Hmm. A lot of tiny parts, like I said earlier. A lot of tiny parts. Got some more parts here. Cut the bag open yet again. Come on, come out. There we are. So we got some more of the deck area. We got the bridge there going on. Have some more individual tiny pieces here. So there's just so so much going on. I could not argue about any of them because they're just so finely detailed. As you can see, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful detail. Especially on there. Again, you can have the doors open, positioned open or closed as you wish. Even on the inside there we have detail. Which, it looks beautiful as anything. Hmm. There you go. And so that one's done. So let's have a look at the next one. So this mainly consists of the uh, the mast. Well, two masts. Again, careful cutting is needed with these. A lot of careful cutting, actually. It's absolutely bizarre. Look at that. Wow. Nice. So one last major part of the kit is the actual um, base. As you can tell, it's all moulded in one. We do have the slots to let you know which to drill out, and even some pegs for that to go in. I'm going to leave in the bag just in case. I'm not going to open that, sorry. But this has a texture that's um, more or less a smooth sandpaper texture if that makes sense it just looks weird but it's absolutely again beautiful or you can place this with a proper piece of wood so that's that one of the main features of this is the actual parts here photo etch parts as you can tell there's actually one missing which is here I'm going to bring that up and show you in a bit. But as you can tell, we have the decals. We have three sheets of photo etch and two lots of figures. Yes, you heard me right. Figures for a ship like this. One piece of thing that I'd, I've kind of been let down the way is you get all this photo etch to make all these parts and yet you don't have any railings to make the actual size of the, well, size of the ship. Which, you know, it doesn't mind because you can buy it, go out and buy it. But for someone learning photo etch, it's kind of a bit of a doddle. It's a bit like saying you promise the stuff and you're not getting all of it. But either way, photo etch is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful detail going there. Have our antennas, railings and parts. So this that's for the main ship. We have down here our um, armour for our flak cannons have the doors here and here we have the two decals which you can make the Kriegsmarine or the US Navy variants and down here we have our figures which in some of them you have to put together 
and of course paint. So let me focus you and show you how small these figures are. So there you go, there's all the figures. Absolutely tiny detail, look at them. So you will need a very fine brush to do all them. So in total there are six figures, um, two at rest, two loading the cannons, and two cleaning up. So that's it. That is what you get in the kit. So that is not bad, as they say. So what do I think of the kit itself? Well, perfectly honest, it is an absolute beautiful kit, and I am going to start this straight away. I cannot wait to get to grips with a proper ship I have built. The last and only ship I built so far was the aircraft carrier Kagi, and I'm just starting on the trawler, which is a bit different. It seems I'm a scale model aircraft guy, which is there we go. I forgot to mention the. I'm guessing that's Tirpitz in the background of Prince Oregon, I think. Looks like Tirpitz, yeah. Anyway, there we go. And that is a review completed. So you get a lot of plastic, a lot of photo etch, and a lot of detail, which is good. So there we go. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go away and going to start building this right now. So with that, thank you for the review. Hope you guys have learned something new from this. Cheers, thank you, and goodbye for now.